Welcome to my channel people author link will be on description after he started connecting the dots inside his head, Minato started wondering what could be the reason I couldn't directly tell him what's going on, but he decided to put his trust in me and replied with a warm smile. I see, well I hope you can open up with us in the future, you are our friend after all, Kashina followed with a serious face and said. That's true Bakorio kun we'll always be here for you and share your burden anytime. Sorry guys I couldn't tell you, after all even I don't know exactly what's the origin of that thing or what it can do so I rather keep as much of my secrets hidden from it as possible. I thought as I remembered the incident of discovering an orb of darkness hiding inside my heart and the terrible fear I felt when I heard a certain sinister whisper, I'm always watching you from where you can't perceive. Because of that event, I became determined not to reveal any of my secrets as much as possible even to these people that I trust until the time to deal with that unknown danger comes, and I will make sure it regrets messing with me. Thank you guys for your understanding, it means a lot to me, I said with a smile, then I turned to a certain annoying fox and without giving him any time to react, he found himself getting hit by a water bullet in the head, grr, kid you want to get eaten. Say Kurama in an angry voice while using his hand to rub the top of his head that was hit by me. I've come here today with some good news, but it seems you don't want to be unsealed so never mind then, I said with a wicked smile before I turned my attention to Minato and Kashina. What are you talking about? Hearing me mention unsealing him, Kurama hurriedly tried to ask me about it but I ignored him and cut him off right away as I said. I got you guys a jutsu that can help you use your spirit forms better, look into my eyes, my eyes started transforming into my three Tomo Sharingan and Minato and Kashina simply looked at the annoyed Kurama helplessly before they looked at my eyes a lot of information was transferred to them, everything they would need to know on how to learn and use the spirit transformation jutsu. This information includes the hand signs required, along with notes from both the future Kashina and Minato who trained personally in this jutsu, and I even got some of the information Tsunade had about this jutsu that she was told by the man who mastered it, Dan Kato. So, it was no surprise that both Minato and Kashina were extremely surprised at the detailed description of the spirit transformation jutsu, and they understood right away that with this, it would save them at least 80% of the time to learn it. Minato was the first to finish processing all the information and he simply gave me a deep look as he felt his thoughts about me having an ability related to time were much more true. As for Kashina, she woke up, her face full of surprise and immediately said, Bakorio kun this is amazing, how did you get such a detailed way to train and use something as rare as the spirit transformation jutsu? I shrugged my shoulders and said, it was all luck, I was training one day with one of my shadow clones outside the village and I stumbled upon a notebook that belonged to Dan Kato, and I found these things in it, hey kid, stop wasting time and tell M, Kurama's hopes rose again when he saw Minato's and Kushina's reactions to the jutsu I gave them and got even more excited at the thought of getting free. However, he was interrupted again, this time by Kashina who seemed surprised, Dan Kato's notebook, isn't that Lady Tsunade's lover that died in the third ninja war. I nodded at her and said, indeed, just like how. Minato is the only person who could learn the second Hokage's flying thunder god jutsu, Dan Kato was the only person capable of learning his spirit transformation jutsu, I see, we were really lucky, said Kashina happily, before she followed by saying in a serious manner, but you should give that notebook to Tsunade-sama if you ever meet her okay. Yes, I replied noticing that Minato was still looking at me with the same look since earlier, it seems he's already guessed it, well I was planning on doing this subtly but now it doesn't matter anymore. I thought before I gave Kurama a glare and said to Minato, Minato, look into my eyes again, Minato did so without saying a word and before long, he found his head filled with three fuenjutsu. They were the sun seal that grants its user the ability to break free from most genjutsu, the seven stars seal that creates a no chakra zone around its user that makes it very hard to seal them, and finally, the third one was the roaring thunder god jutsu that I stole from Satoshi Yukisake. This is... The first two are based on the theories we had to help Kurama, as for the last one, it seems Bakorio kun really has an ability related to either seeing the future or time traveling. The first two fuenjutsu surprised him but he actually could guess how they came to be, the last one however shocked him as it was almost tailor-made for his style, 
because if he learns this fuenjutsu, his fighting prowess would increase exponentially and he will be even more destructive and terrifying. Make it look like you came up with them, was the last thing I said to Minato inside the genjutsu before I dispelled it and my eyes started turning back to normal. What's going on? said Kashina curious at what could actually make Minato who rarely loses his calm become so surprised and even shocked. Oh, it's just a fuenjutsu I found out that could interest Minato and increase his fighting arsenal, anyways Naruto's waiting for me, I need to go now, hey kid wait. Yelled Kurama hurriedly, what are you yelling for? I said with a disinterested look on my face which made Kashina and Minato chuckle a little. Gur, tell me what news do you have about when I will be unsealed, said Kurama expectantly, oh, now that you mention it, I indeed had some good news for you, but you don't seem to want to hear them. I said with a smirk which annoyed Kurama even more so this time he decided to threaten me, tell me kid or I won't give you any of my chakra again, what the hell, are you my girlfriend trying to threaten me with sex or something? I thought and I couldn't help but laugh at it which made Kurama even more agitated for not being taken seriously, quadruple A brat what are you laughing at, the wind from his scream almost blew me away and seeing that I was pushing Kurama too far, Minato tried to meditate as he arrived between us and said with a nervous smile, Bakoryo-kun, why don't you let it go this time and tell him the good news. I looked at this dumb huge fox with a smile and said, of course I can tell him, however, there's going to be a price, Kurama finally calmed down and decided to also take a step back and said, what do you want kid? Poor Kurama, he really wants to be free, thought Kashina, feeling pity for Kurama who was getting played by a kid, however she was surprised by what happened next. Because, the moment Kurama finished speaking, the smile disappeared from my face as I looked at him dead in the eyes and said, I want you to tell me everything you are hiding about my family's heirloom, Kurama's eyes contracted a little, and his expression froze. Meanwhile, Minato looked at this and let out a sigh as he thought, so he also noticed huh. Grr. Kurama kept growling while looking at Meanwhile deep in thought as his eyes kept flickering from time to time in clear struggle. Meanwhile, Kashina shot Minato a curious look, and when she noticed that he was simply looking at this calmly, she immediately understood that he knew all along about this but didn't say anything to her. So, her curious look turned into a cold smile as she started thinking about how to punish him first this later and it immediately caused Minato to feel chills down his spine so he turned and looked at her apologetically. Unfortunately, that cold smile did not disappear from Kushina's face which made Minato understand that his fate isn't going to be any good. Sigh, why is it that I get in trouble for other people's doing, thought Minato, sat at his own bad luck. Fine kid, I will tell you, but you will have to unseal me as soon as possible, said Kurama after he was done with his long internal struggle. I let out a sigh of relief as my curiosity will finally be satisfied and replied with a smile, okay. Don't worry, I can promise you'll be released in less than a month, Minato can attest to what I'm saying, right Minato? Minato nodded and looked at Kurama, I don't think we will need a whole month, two weeks at most and it's going to be done. Kashina felt surprised at this statement as she was still unaware that Bakorio transferred the completed seals to her husband but she decided to deal with him when this is all over. Kurama on the other hand nodded excitedly at the good news, ha ha ha, this is good, fine then I will tell you what I know about that necklace, but I need to warn you, this is something beyond even me to handle, so are you sure you want to know about it? We were all surprised at just how dangerous this heirloom was turning out to be, but I nodded anyway, I'm ready, please start explaining, fine then, said Kurama as his expression turned somehow nostalgic as he started narrating his story, a story I knew of but this was not the case for Kashina and Minato. A long time ago existed a man that was hailed with many different names, some called him the Sage of the Six Paths, some called him the Ancestor of Ninshu, and he was the first person to invent and teach the way to use chakra to the people of this world. Kurama paused here smugly to see our reaction, but he was disappointed when he found out that Minato was the only one taking him seriously I because couldn't care less about this point of the story so I was spacing out thinking about what to make for lunch. Meanwhile, Kashina looked at Kurama with a dark face and snapped at him, you kept pretending you were hiding some sort of secret all this time just to tell us the story of the Sage of Six Paths. Plus, did he even really exist? Having his ego take such a huge strike from the lack of interest everyone seemed to have other than Minato, 
so Karama ended up releasing a disappointed sigh and said, No it's not merely a legend, after all I met him personally. Anyways, you're a hopeless case woman so I can't bother explaining the greatness of that man to you, who are you calling hopeless, replied Kashina and this started a long argument between her and Karama which started to annoy me. Meanwhile, Minato was truly surprised as he thought, for Karama to regard him so highly with great admiration, I never saw him mentioned anyone like this, even when I discussed with him about Madara Uchiha and the first Hokage. Can you two stop bickering and just explain to me how's this related to the Sage of the Six Paths? I said in annoyance interrupting them not wanting any more waste of my time Kurama was pleased that I clearly believed him, unlike a certain Kashina which he shot a deadly glare before he continued his story, anyways, one day I remember visiting him. Before his death and I found him accompanied with a certain annoying toad and they were discussing about this necklace in a severe tone. Apparently, the old sage found it by chance buried in some ancient ruin, and when I asked him about its use, he said that he couldn't find out, however, he felt a strong amount of both space and time attributes emanating from it and guessed that it might be connected to another world. After that, I believe he sealed it away, but I don't know how it ended up in your family. After Kurama finished his explanation, I fell deep in thought as I started to think about all the possibilities related to this necklace, According to the letter left by my parents, this necklace was passed down in our family for generations, as for how it ended up in the hands of an Uchiha family. It's possible that after Hagoromo died, Indra who's the ancestor of the Uchiha stole it and gave it to his descendants later on for some reason. However, what is worrying is that even someone as talented as Minato who has a great affinity with the space element couldn't feel anything from the necklace and if not for the seals engraved on it, no one would think of it as something special. So, for Hagoromo to consider it something from another world. It seems I should try that ability on it. What are you thinking about Bakoryo-kun? Asked Minato who noticed me deep in thought while Kashina kept asking Kurama about what he knew about the Sage of Six Paths to no avail as it invoked the sad memory of knowing that his life span was cut short because decided to create the tailed beasts. I'm trying to find out if this necklace is a blessing or a curse that's all, I said with a sigh. Don't worry about it, I'm sure we will understand its purpose in the future, said Minato with a kind smile trying to cheer me up, and I couldn't help but smile back before I said wickedly while shooting Kashina a glance. I hope so too, at least I know your future is as dim as mine ha 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 ha. Minato's expression darkened a little when he remembered what was waiting for him especially when Kashina turned to look at us just when I said this and her hair started to slowly rise up so with a smile I left the seal space while waving them goodbye. This guy is really making me regret being nice tch, thought Minato as a certain red-haired storm slowly approached him. Back to my house, I finally opened my eyes and I found myself faced with a very bored Naruto which made me feel guilty for letting him wait for so long so I said, yo Naruto I'm back, finally, what took you so long, replied Naruto as some energy started returning to his face. Oh, it's that annoying fox, he just doesn't know when to shut up and kept talking a lot, I replied without hesitation putting all the blame on Kurama. Sorry Kurama, I had to sacrifice you, but it's okay I'm sure you have 9 lives Kurama was screaming inside the seal space when he heard how I put all the blame on him, but he would have felt worse if he could hear what I was thinking in my head. That's true, that stupid fox is stupid, said Naruto and I couldn't help but laugh at how bad and funny this insult was. That's true, anyways go get Sasuke for me, starting today we are going to train harder, you want to be a ninja right? Yes, I want to be a great ninja like my father, replied Naruto enthusiastically and started running to Sasuke's house which made me nod in approval. Now then, let's see what we got here, I said as I picked up the necklace and used my appraisal ability on it. The system granted me many abilities and functions, but the one that had the most conditions to use so far was definitely the appraisal ability. There are two applications of this ability, either you use it on people where it will show you their name, level, stats, and abilities or you use it on items and it will show you a general description of what they are along with their function. For example, when I use this ability on my basic heartless necklace, I get the following description, name. Heartless Necklace Basic Type, Accessory, Level, None, Weight, 21.5 grams, Description, This is a cheap imitation of the legendary Heartless Necklace made from the fangs of a Nightmare Bat. Function, 
plus 10% to Genjutsu power and to Genjutsu resistance. Requirements. Compatible bloodline. However, the information you get depends on many factors and it doesn't always show you everything whether it be when you use it on humans or items. For items, I found that they could be categorized into the following ranks, trash basic, advanced, rare, epic, legendary. As for humans, they are categorized in titles, normal, elite, mini boss boss. Most of the cage level ninja have boss or mini boss titles, meaning that these people at the same level are far stronger than their counterparts. And this is what limits my ability because I found out that the appraisal works fine on normal people and basic items as long as there's not more than 15 levels of difference between us. However, this margin grows smaller, and the smaller it is, the more the rank or the title grows higher and it could be summarized as fellow. Basic, normal, 15 levels max. Advanced, elite, 10 levels max. Rare, mini boss, same level or less. Epic, boss. I need to be at least 15 levels higher. So, I generally couldn't make much use of this ability in the war, especially when used on cage level ninja as other than their name, I get nothing else. And so, as I was going to use this ability on this necklace that even Hagoromo thought so highly of, I wasn't expecting much, appraisal, I said in my head while looking at the beautiful necklace that I was holding in my right hand and immediately, a screen appeared in front of me name, type, accessory. Level. Weight. 18 grams. Description. Function. Requirements. My eyes dilated a little bit as I thought, am I dreaming? Even the Kohaku no Johei that was a legendary item didn't have all of its information hidden and I could at least see its rank. This one however, even its rank is stated as, now I'm sure this is not something from this world, no one is strong enough to make something of such high grade here, not even Hagoromo. As my thoughts reached this point, my heart started racing a little as I thought about something, the Kohaku no Johei if used by someone without enough chakra, it will immediately drain them of every drop of chakra they have until end up dead. So, what would happen to me if this thing activates and starts draining my chakra, and I can't even be sure if I could load as this thing had space and time energies when Hagoromo found it so it might affect my ability. Certain death. I muttered and for the first time since coming to this world. I felt how close death can be in the various ways it might knock on your door. So, without hesitation, I put that necklace in my inventory and decided to never touch it again unless I can decipher its purpose or have enough power to handle it. TCH, I can't relax at all can I, I couldn't help but let out a sigh and tried to push this thing out of my head, minus five minutes later the sound of two kids arguing over nothing approached the front door of my house bringing a smile to my face. Good thing you two don't have to suffer, I thought as I opened the door and to no surprise, there was someone else accompanying them, it was Itachi who already detected but still pretended to be surprised when I saw him. I shot him a glance before I turned my attention to Sasuke and Naruto and said, okay you two, stop bickering this early in the morning, we are going to start your training and the first thing I need you to do is run five laps around the Uchiha compound, the first one to finish it will be the winner. The moment I finished what I was saying, I could see fire lighting up in their eyes ready to settle who was better, and without any hesitation, they both turned around and started running while yelling at each other, I will definitely win, no, I will win, and so, I was freed from this plague for a while and turned to handle the bigger one. After seeing them go far away from us, I turned my attention to Itachi who was smiling while looking at them. So, what do you two want this early in the morning? I said while yawning. Itachi's eyes flashed for an instant as he thought, what a monster, and not long after, Shisui flickered and landed beside Itachi with an apologetic face as he said. Sorry for bothering you, Hokage-sama said he wants to talk to you about something, hem. What does Fugaku want, and why are these two trying to test me? How annoying. I thought before I replied, okay, where's he? He's waiting for you at the Hokage's office, replied Shisui with a smile on his face. Okay I'm going then, goodbye, I said and started moving towards the Hokage's office ignoring them both. Shisui shot Itachi a serious look before he went back to his apologetic face and said, wait, Bakorio, said Shisui. I turned back to him and tilted my head waiting for what the hell he wants and he quickly said, Itachi and I were also invited for this meeting, let's go together, many thoughts started racing in my mind but all they can see was me shrugging my shoulder and nod at them before I started walking again. 
As we were leaving the Uchiha compound, Itachi couldn't help but ask aren't you going to leave a note or something for Naruto and Sasuke, they might get upset if they don't find you when they finish their little challenge, ho, thinking about your little brother you creep. I thought before I replied without even looking at them, it's fine, I left a clone in my house, Shisui and Itachi exchanged another look secretly before they turned to stare at my back in wariness as they thought, we actually didn't detect the presence of his clone at all. Shisui decided to quickly change the subject so he said, by the way, thank you for all that you did for the village and the clan, I can't imagine how serious this situation could have turned to if not for your plan and even risking your life in fighting Danzo, oh, I know what it could have turned into if I let go on with your stupidity. Still, him this is the first time he's talking so sincerely, it seems like he's not a hopeless case, I thought before I replied, well, I did it for myself so you don't need to thank me, Shisui didn't know what to say to such a selfish reason. Do you guys know what this meeting is for? I said casually while using my jikaninki to detect if they were hiding anything. This time Itachi was the one to respond, no, we actually don't know, yesterday father told me about the meeting and to inform you and Shisui about it in the morning. So, I got Shisui before we came to visit you, I see. I replied before I went into silence and they did the same. Our walk was short and before long, we reached the Hokage's office and one of the Hokage's guards led us in right away before he left and to my surprise, this place was kind of crowded. There was Fugaku sitting down, and beside him standing up were Hiruzen and Shikaku. I quickly greeted them before I went straight to the point, so what's this meeting for? The room went silent before Fugaku who was sitting down, his hands on the desk and his chin resting on them looked me in the eye and stoically said, this meeting is for you. Or if I rephrase this better, we want to ask, who are you? My eyes dilated as this simple question kept repeating itself on my head before I thought, well, this is unexpected, who are you? Asked Fugaku, not mincing his words and causing all the attention of the people in the room to be focused on me. So, it has all come to this huh? Now that the situation is kind of stable for both the clan and Konoha, he finally decided to clear his suspicions huh? I thought as I looked apathetically at Fugaku feeling betrayed by his lack of trust and seeing how I was looking at him made him feel uncomfortable. Or was it the people in the room that pushed him to ask about this? I thought as I looked at everyone in the room with the same look. Shikaku didn't flinch at all, while Hiruzen only heaved a long sigh. As for Shisui and Itachi, I could see they were on guard ready for anything unexpected. So, with a clearly disappointed face, I finally asked Fugaku directly, I'm going to ask you two questions and I need you to answer them honestly before you receive the answer to your question. Silence filled the room as everyone waited for Fugaku's decision, but surprisingly he nodded and said, go ahead ask them, the first question is simple, what did I do that made you ask this question? I said to Fugaku completely ignoring the rest of the people in the room as they didn't matter to me Fugaku's reply came immediately and without hesitation, as he said, you know too much, and your background doesn't match what you became, explained further, I said in this time Shikaku was the one that stepped forward with a stack of paper in his hand and said, allow me to explain in the Hokage's place, I nodded at him and he started reading from his stack of paper, name, Bakorio Uchiha parents, son of Yakumo and Uzume Uchiha age, 5 years old talent, trash bloodline, diluted evaluation, not worth training this is your old evaluation, and here's the new one name, Bakorio Uchiha. Parents, son of Yakumo and Uzume Uchiha, age, 5, talent, monstrous bloodline, very high evaluation, a highly dangerous individual with extremely good social skills and a high level of kenjutsu, taijutsu, a ninjutsu that allows him to hold off a cage level ninja for a while, origins suspected, after Shikaku read me everything, there was no change in my eyes so he continued reading more, now, if you were in our position, how would you perceive a person who transforms from a nobody with such low evaluation to a very dangerous individual in the span of a month or so without any apparent backing and he seems to have critical information about many things that no one should know and even seems to be using secret jutsu from other clans, the last point was clearly hinting at my use of shadows while fighting against Danzo. Does he think no one other than his Nara clan's bloodline could master the use of shadows? 
Unfortunately, for you I have a better bloodline than yours I thought as I remembered the reward of a certain quest one completed during the war. Back at the war after I completed my last fight in the Kumo front, I received a notification quest serial killer, kill 100 people. Reward. 2000 points, shadow bloodline 25%. Before this, I got a notification after killing 10 people quest serial killer, kill 10 people. Reward. 400 points, killer intent passive. But, I didn't care about it during the war as it only gave me the passive ability, killing intent, which intensifies my killing intent and makes me release that ominous aura that I use so often to distract people or even immobilize them if they have weak minds. However, this is a double-edged sword because in the end, it made it hard for me to control the killing intent in my heart allowing someone like Kurama who has a special emotion-related ability to sense it even though I was trying my best to hide it. The shadow bloodline however was another story, unlike the Nara clan's bloodline that I suspect has more than one effect, similar to the Akamichi bloodline I have that increased my defense by half its percentage and also increases my affinity towards body-related Yang release jutsu. The Nara clan's bloodline help increase their intelligence and their yin affinity towards shadow-related jutsu by half its percentage my shadow bloodline however focuses solely on increasing the affinity towards shadow-related jutsu, so my 25% in shadow bloodline is similar to a Nara's 50% but only in regard to affinity towards shadow-related jutsu, they still beat me in the matter of intelligence. So, the moment I gained this bloodline I visited the battlefield with Iwa, where the Ino Shika Cho alliance was located, and made sure to learn any jutsu I found useful from the Nara and Akamichi clans to enhance my fighting arsenal. Back at the Hokage's office Shikaku was still explaining his reasoning, dot and this is why we want to clear any suspicions around your identity, especially with how close you are to Naruto, otherwise this might cause some problems to the village if you decide to turn against it. Fugaku frowned a little when he heard this but he didn't say anything as my expression kept turning colder and colder as a dangerous aura started slowly emanating from my body which made the people in this room nervous, especially Itachi and Shisui who already activated their Sharingans. Second question and this is only for Fugaku to answer, I said looking straight into his eyes and once he nodded I simply asked, do you trust me? The answer to this question was going to decide the way I consider this village in the future. Fugaku felt like a boulder was put on top of his chest as he knew he was going too far by interrogating me like this even after all the things I did for him and the clan. Noticing how uncomfortable Fugaku was, Hiruzen decided to insert himself in the conversation to pacify things out while letting out a sigh. This is about the safety oh, however, the moment this idiot opened his mouth my anger fully exploded as I said. Say one more word and you will die. A terrible killing intent started gushing out from my body creating a strong wind current that started destroying the furniture in the room and made everyone gasp in fear. Just what kind of monster are we provoking, thought Shikaku as his eyes widened in surprise. How many people do you have to kill to have such a killing intent, thought Shisui in sadness. As for Itachi, he could only think of one thing, how is it possible for such unfairness to exist in this world? what would happen if such power lands in the wrong hands. Other than Fugaku that simply kept staring at me in surprise and guilt, the people in the room were shocked to different degrees and even the Anbu and the Hokage's guard were alarmed by this. However, the one who got surprised the most was definitely Hiruzen who had most of the killing intent focused on him until he saw a shadowy figure appear behind my back, it was a black humanoid with a black and sharp sickle in its right hand raised horizontally, and before he could gather his wits, he found the sickle was already on his neck. Sweat started pouring from his head and he couldn't help but swallow his saliva in a fear that only kept increasing the longer the silence continued until it was interrupted by Fugaku when he said, I will give you my answer. The dangerous aura around me slowly retracted back to my body and before long, the illusion that only Hiruzen was seeing also vanished, and only then did he notice how sweaty both his hands were. I'm growing older day by day and the coming generations are quickly surpassing his sigh. I kept staring at Fugaku waiting for his response and to my surprise, he looked at me in the eye uncaring of all the ominous aura around me, and to the shock of everyone in the room and that arrived after my outburst he simply said, I trust you, I trust you, said Fugaku with his usually stoic face, 
and at the same time, his special guards along with the Anbu guarding around the area arrived to the office while heaving a sigh of relief when they found out that only some furniture was damaged and no one was harmed. One of the Anbu, a man with spiky gray hair who had a distinctive sharingan shining through the hole in his mask quickly analyzed the situation and noticed that the people in the room were staring in shock at Fugaku and wariness at the kid facing him. So, to his surprise, his mind came to a terrifying conclusion, was it really this kid that released that terrifying killing intent? However, before he could confirm his doubts, one of the three special Hokage guards immediately arrived in front of Fugaku along with the other two and directly asked, Fifth Hokage-sama, is everything okay? We felt that a strong enemy might be around he, before he could finish what he was saying, Fugaku cut him off and said, the situation's under control, return to your positions immediately, the special guard shot a look at the destroyed office and was about to refute this order, but, however, he then saw the cold look in Fugaku's eyes and understood immediately that it wasn't the time to be hard-headed. Idiot, can't you read the mood at all tch, thought Kakashi before he quickly said, we will take our leave then, please call us if you need anything, and then he immediately left. Fugaku nodded at him in appreciation, and before long, the rest of the Anbu followed after him along with the special guards. With the distractions gone, everyone turned their attention to me and I took note of each and every single one of their expressions and how they were changing while waiting for what I was going to say next. A smile couldn't help but break on my face, a genuine smile that made them wonder if they truly experienced that horrifying killing intent from the same person. I'm glad you trusted me, I understand your reasons to suspect my identity and they are reasonable, you would be stupid if you didn't think about them. However, I can't expose my secrets, at least not now. However, I can help you put everything concerning this matter to rest, I said with a smile, please, I really trust you but I still want to put our minds at ease, said Fugaku clearly offering me a chance not to explain myself to him, but to the village. Thank you, I said in my mind while looking at Fugaku before I turned my attention to the people in the room that were looking at me suspiciously. Why is my father putting this much trust on Vicorio? It almost seems like he considers him. Itachi's heart was suddenly filled with disappointment, something that escaped the notice of everyone in the room except for the one that understood him the most. Shisui. The reason you can trust me is simple, I have many people I care about in Konoha so I can't allow any harm to befall it. I said but Shikaku shook his head and said, this reason is very commendable, but this alone is not enough to offset the hidden danger you could pose. I nodded at him. I understand, that's why I also made a plan to help the village. A mastermind like Shikaku was immediately intrigued by how the village could be helped and the rest of the people in. The room also felt the same including Itachi who cared deeply about the village so without hesitation Shikaku said, please elaborate more, take a look at this. I said as I handed Fugaku a scroll while thinking, your trust isn't going to go to waste my friend, the people in the room were surprised at Fugaku directly accepting the scroll not suspecting it to contain any trap which made Itachi unconsciously use his Sharingan to quickly check it and heaved a sigh of relief when he found nothing suspicious about it. However, Fugaku noticed this and shot him a cold glare which made him deactivate his Sharingan in disappointment. What's wrong with Itachi today, thought Fugaku before he turned his attention back to the scroll before his eyes suddenly widened, his stoic face breaking apart as he stood up from his seat. Is this true? said Fugaku already believing it to be true but still wanted to confirm it as he thought. If the content of this scroll's true, it seems we barely avoided a huge disaster. I calmly nodded at him with a serious look on my face and the people in the room finally couldn't hold back their curiosity anymore so they asked, what's wrong Fugaku, asked Hiruzen, and with a slightly shaken hand, Fugaku didn't respond and simply handed the scroll that felt heavy to him who had an even more exaggerated reaction as he read through it along with Shikaku who broke out in a cold sweat and felt a fear he never felt before. I never thought we were digging our grave to such a degree, I really failed my duty as a military advisor and Jonan commander, thought Shikaku with a heavy heart. This is no joke, are you sure of the content of this scroll? Asked Hiruzen with a dark countenance that only appears when he's about to go to war. And the answer he received was a simple, yes, Shisui's and Itachi's curiosity got ignited seeing the reactions of all these grown-ups so they tried to take a look at the scroll. However, Hiruzen immediately closed it letting them only catching a glimpse of its title, 
Kanaha's destruction. What's all of this about? Thought Itachi as he shot his friend a wondering look but Shisui was as puzzled as him if not more as he gave the kid facing the current Hokage a deep look. This information cannot leave this room understood, said Fugaku with a scary face while emanating a dangerous aura and everyone agreed with him immediately including the two clueless Uchiha geniuses. Itachi, Shisui, leave at once, ordered Fugaku. Itachi and Shisui were elite so they didn't act childish and immediately left understanding that the situation was beyond them, and once they left, a heated discussion started concerning the content of the scroll. I wrote this scroll yesterday and I included in it all the information I collected about the spies planted here by each hidden village as well as the consequences of Donzo's action if he truly forced the Uchiha to rebel and what would have happened if the other villages interfered at that point. Bakorio, how did you come across all this information? Asked Shikaku with a serious face. I told you, I can't disclose my secrets, but you can trust me, I only want what's good for the village, and I'm sure you already have an idea about the validity of this information, after all, some of them people mentioned are already suspected for being spies, but you just couldn't find proof of it, now however you have the evidence you need, it seems I really failed this village and almost caused its destruction, said Hiruzen with a sigh and I couldn't agree more with what he said. You should handle this situation carefully. As for me, soon I will be leaving the village and hopefully I will bring with me a surprise, I said with a smile before I simply disappeared in a puff of smoke. Fugaku looked at this for an instant and couldn't help but burst out laughing. What Koto Amatsukami? What Amatsu Mikabashi Fugaku's Mangekio ability? That kid probably guessed our purpose from the start and he was testing me, I almost messed up again. Meanwhile, the people in the room simply stared in shock at just how easily they were all played. Hmm, it seems that Fugaku didn't disappoint me and it all turned out all right in the end, I thought as I received the memories from the shadow clone I sent to the meeting. Kanaha's going to be occupied for a while with the matter of the spies, so it's time to solve a few problems of my own once and for all, and the key to many of them lies in the hands of one person. Tsunade huh? I muttered while watching the two kids training in front of me throwing kune and shurikens on different targets on the trees. Ag. Why can't I get it right? Groaned Naruto annoyed that whatever he throws doesn't even connect with the tree, and to add salt to the injury, right after Sasuke made a move asterisk tab 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 all his throws almost hit a bullseye which in turn made him look smugly at Naruto in a challenging manner as he said, hey, I will be the first to surpass Vakorio, oh really? We will see about that, replied Naruto accepting the challenge not backing down at all before he started training harder. I couldn't help but smile at these kids putting me as their goal, dreams are nice to have, even unachievable owns I then started thinking seriously about my next course of action, I need to find Tsunade and test out a certain theory to revive Minato and Kashina, there's also the matter with Mukai's kid, I need to help treat his illness to gain Mukai's true loyalty, I don't want to lose such a precious talent or forcefully control him again, and then there's Jiraiya. Jiraiya was the best person I can find and learn how to control natural energy from, or at least gain some experience in this regard so meeting him was necessary for recharging the system. Well, first let's see what that bastard is doing I thought before I retrieved the communication device Minato and Kashina created and I immediately sent my chakra into it. Somewhere in the land of fire, a man was walking out of a village in disappointment while smoking casually. Just where am I supposed to find that woman TCH, she's clearly making sure to erase her trail wherever she goes, said Mukai with a face full of irritation at the thought of the time he's going to waste to find Tsunade, but he kept consoling himself with the thought that she might be capable of healing his son so it was worth it in the end. He then was about to take out a map from his pouch to check for the location of the next village or city nearby with a famous gambling establishment but his action was interrupted when he sensed something vibrating, what's this? Mukai's irritated expression immediately disappeared and what replaced it was an eerie calmness as he entered his fighting mode, but then when he retrieved the item that was vibrating he finally remembered what it was, oh, so it's that item the kid gave me to communicate with him from a distance huh? He said I need to put my chakra into it to use it, without wasting much time, Mukai started injecting some chakra into the device. Hello there Mukai, do you miss my voice? A slightly distorted voice traveled to Mukai's ears and he wasn't sure what irritated him the most, the voice or its owner. This device will stop working if I cease injecting chakra into it right, 
said Mukai apathetically threatening to stop the conversation so I quickly replied, TCH you are no fun at all as always, anyways I found Tsunade, so you can stop looking for her, thanks. For nothing, I said to the shock of Mukai, what? How did he find her this fast, not even the elders of Konoha know her location, it seems I underestimated this kid, where? Replied Mukai with some interest in his voice and I simply said, meet me at the southern lake in six hours, I said as I stopped transmitting my chakra without waiting for this idiot's response. Sigh, kids these days, muttered Mukai before he suddenly vanished like a phantom and started going south where the southern lake was located, it was a very popular location close to the border of the land of fire and the land of Tisa he knew about it. Back at Konoha after I stopped injecting my chakra into the device, I turned my attention to Naruto and Sasuke and said with a smile, hey guys, want to go on a trip with me outside of Konoha. The moment Naruto heard me, he immediately threw away the shurikens and kunai he had in his hands and arrived in front of me in a yellow flash, WTF, or Yumanato or something, I thought before I heard Naruto excitedly talk with a wide grin on his cute face, I'm going I'm going, let's go right now, this is going to be fun. Sasuke also arrived soon after with an excited face but he hesitated a little bit as he said, I will need to ask mother first, go ahead then, ask her, and don't take too long because I'm setting off in 15 minutes, I said with a smile and Sasuke quickly turned around and started running to his house. I then turned my attention on the mess these kids left behind bringing a frown to my face before I released a sigh and started extending chakra strings from my fingertips and collecting all the kunais and shurikens on the floor and embedded on the trees. Woo this is so cool, what's this, asked Naruto with his big blue eyes widening in wonder. I'm manipulating and concentrating chakra into strings so that they don't break easily and could hold a certain weight, this is something used by people who manipulate puppets as their way of fighting, I replied to him as I easily collected everything into a bag. Wah, use puppets. They must be weak, said Naruto while his imagination ran wild thinking of someone using a teddy bear to fight. Let's go home and prepare for the trip. This kind of chakra manipulation is still way out of your league for now, I said as I turned around and started walking back home. Oh, I can easily do it. Look, said Naruto before he started focusing on his hand to the best of his ability while yelling. Ah, now you are turning into Goku. I let out a sigh and ignored this idiot as I kept walking and before long, a disappointed Naruto started running after me with a pout on his face. My heart softened a little so I said, I will teach you how to do it in the future, but you need to promise me to be a good kid during this trip. Naruto's face was filled with a huge grin as he said, all right it's a promise. Back home, I picked some money as well as food and water for the trip because it might last longer with Naruto and Sasuke who can't run as fast as Ninja. Almost 15 minutes later, Sasuke came knocking at my house, and to no surprise whatsoever, he was accompanied by his brother Itachi and his friend Shisui. Sasuke uncomfortably said, Bakorio, I can go but my mother insisted on big brother Itachi accompanying us. I smiled at him and said, it's fine, the more company the better, before I shot a look secretly at the two brats behind him. Shisui smiled and said, where are we going? Naruto finally realized that he was so excited at the thought of leaving the village for the first time that he didn't ask where they were going, so he looked at me curiously. We are going to meet a friend, and then go meet someone else, anyways if you are ready let's head off, I said as I started walking in the direction of Kanaha's gate pretending I haven't noticed a certain Kakashi tailing after us. Is he moving on his own, or did someone order him? Either way, it doesn't seem like Itachi and Shisui are aware of his presence. Well Fugaku, it seems you passed this test too huh, this is really surprising. I started feeling a little confused. After all, I decided to invite Naruto and Sasuke to test Fugaku and the village one last time, and he actually passed it even though there seems to be a lot of opposition to this decision. Hence, Kakashi's presence here. As for Itachi and Shisui's presence, I didn't have any doubt that it was Makoto trying to ensure our safety that's all. Maybe I can have another true friend in this village. I thought as we finally reached Kanaha's gates so, this is what the outside of the village looks like huh? It's amazing, muttered Naruto as he enjoyed the ride on the carriage that I hired. Of course, I wasn't going to drag two kids that weren't ninja with me on such a long journey on foot, 
so I simply sent a clone to find if there were any merchants heading south while waiting for Sasuke, and after paying some money along with constant persuasion, I finally made someone agree to take us. This merchant was called Ryakai, he was an old fat man, probably in his 50s, his hair started to whiten but his body and face seemed very vigorous and energetic. After talking with him for a while, I found out that he actually comes from the land of tea, which is my destination in the first place so I was pleasantly surprised. He had a nervous looking young man with him called Hotaru that acted as his guard and he was the reason I had to work hard to reach an agreement with him as he kept telling Ryakai not to take me with him for some reason. Which made me suspect that something was off about this guy. I could tell that from the moment I approached them, his body was always positioned in a way to protect Ryakai in case I tried to do anything so his fighting capabilities were definitely not to be underestimated. This is your first time outside. Ryakai asked Naruto with a kind smile when he noticed the look of curiosity on his face. Um, old man, this is my first time outside, replied Naruto innocently causing dark lines to appear on Ryakai's face who doesn't like to be reminded of his age who are you calling old man? I'm still young, said Ryakai who regretted talking to this kid in the first place. However, this time Sasuke interrupted and said, TCH, stupid old man, causing Naruto to burst out laughing before that laughter was interrupted when they both got punched in the head by me. What did you hit us for Bakorio? asked Naruto with a pout as he rubbed his head and Sasuke was the same. Don't be rude. I said and I paused on purpose Ryakai quickly nodded and said, um um what a sensible key, but I suddenly interrupted him as I continued saying, to this old man, and then I burst out laughing with Naruto and Sasuke joining me. You rascals, yelled Ryakai making me sure that this journey wasn't going to be boring. Meanwhile, Itachi and Shisui were keeping Hotaru company at the front of the carriage while he acted as the coachman. Sorry about the kids, they are just having fun said Shisui apologetically when he heard how we were making fun of Ryakai. Hotaru seemed less nervous by now, maybe because I wasn't traveling with them on my own. It's fine, Ryakai-san seems to be having fun too, Shisui nodded at this agreeing with him and then Itachi asked, Hotaru-san, how long is it going to take us to reach the southern border of the land of fire? Hotaru looked at the sky before he said, it's a little bit cloudy today, so I suspect it might rain. Delaying our journey, so between 6 and 8 hours and maybe more. I see, you are right, the weather seems to be changing and it will be hard for the carriage to move in such muddy terrain, replied Itachi who has experience traveling from the many missions he accomplished. It might rain huh? I thought when I overheard their conversation, well I guess Mukai will have to wait for a while. Just like that, our journey continued peacefully for three hours with the kids bickering and having fun from time to time among themselves or with Ryakai who took a liking to them and it already started raining heavily to my enjoyment. Tack 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 the sound of the rain hitting on the roof of the carriage along with the strong smell of the earth made me feel calm and relaxed like my spirit was being cleansed even though the inside of the carriage was a little bit crowded with the addition of Shisui and Itachi. Thunder would roar from time to time breaking this calm but soon after, I find myself returning to the same serene state, that was until I heard a very far sound different from the roars of thunder, it was the pain scream of a child. I immediately stood up with a serious look on my face to the surprise of the people in the carriage other than Ryakai who didn't know me well and said jokingly, what's wrong Bakorio-kun, did you have a bad dream? However, I simply ignored him and focused all my mind on locating the sound of the scream, slowly, the sound of the rain started vanishing, then the sound of the carriage and the horse drawing it, and after all noise was eliminated, I finally heard clearly the sound of screams and someone asking for help. And right after that, I was woken up by the roaring sound of thunder. What's wrong Bakorio? asked Shisui who started having a bad feeling. I heard the sound of a child screaming, I said, but Ryakai didn't take what I said seriously because I was only a kid. Not to mention that his guard Hotaru whom he trusted so much would have noticed such a thing if it was true so he jokingly said, are you sure it's not the sound of thunder? I'm sure, stop the carriage, I said as my body started leaking a murderous aura which Ryakai took very seriously this time as he thought in fear, this kid is more dangerous than any assassin that was sent after my life. The carriage immediately stopped as Hotaru opened the door holding a dagger in his hand without any of his previous nervousness on his face but Shisui immediately stood in front of him and said, stop, 
This is a misunderstanding, however, Hotaru didn't listen to him and was about to attack until he heard Ryakai speaking, Hotaru, stop. Sasuke and Naruto kept looking at what was happening worriedly especially when they sensed the killing intent I kept hidden inside my heart. I underestimated you, said Ryakai as he shot me a deep look, but if there's a kid in danger I will definitely rescue him, can you lead us there? Ryakai-san we can't trust such a dangerous individual, yelled Hotaru hurriedly but he was interrupted by me as I said, you don't need to trust me, I didn't ask you to accompany me in the first place, tch, shisui, itachi, please take care of Naruto and Sasuke I will go check out what's happening, no, I will come with you, said Naruto, me too, followed Sasuke Ryakai let out a laugh and said to Hotaru, well we can't be outdone by kids right, let's go, be careful then, I said before I shot Itachi and Shisui looked to protect the kids before anything else and I started directing Hotaru to drive us to where I heard the sound coming from. It wasn't that far away, but it was muffled by the rain, that's why they couldn't hear it, however the more we got closer to the entrance of a certain cave that was way off the road, the clearer the sound became, and they all turned serious and enraged at who could cause so much pain to a child. However, just as the carriage arrived near the cave, a tall muscular man with short messy black hair suddenly emerged from it. He had a very distinguished face including a broad jawline, pronounced forehead, and noticeable creases under his eyes. He also had black triangular markings on each of his cheeks. This is, this man seemed familiar for some reason, however I couldn't bother with his appearance because the moment he appeared, he was already doing the hand signs of a jutsu I recognized dog right pointing arrow snake right pointing arrow horse right pointing arrow tiger right pointing arrow snake right pointing arrow dog right pointing arrow tiger. Not good. I thought and I immediately grabbed Naruto and Sasuke and jumped far away from the carriage as I yelled to the rest, leave the carriage. Hotaru immediately tried to carry Ryakai but he found him heavy so fortunately for him, Itachi and Shisui helped him as they all jumped away and just as we did. That man muttered, earth release, fissure jutsu, and soon after, a huge fissure that spanned a long distance appeared under the carriage swallowing it whole and completely devastating the terrain with the fate of the people that were in it unknown. Moments earlier when that unknown ninja used the earth release, fissure jutsu. It immediately created a fissure on the ground beneath the carriage we were riding, and that fissure kept spreading horizontally and vertically which in turn enlarged the area affected devastating the terrain. As I jumped out of the carriage while carrying Naruto and Sasuke each in one of my hands, I was suddenly hit by a wicked idea that could help me get back at those two kids and their stupidity and teach them a lesson at the same time. Itachi and Shisui can handle that guy, but maybe I should spice things up for Itachi. Hopefully, this will go as planned, this thought didn't take me even one instant thanks to my high reaction speed before I started observing the crumbling terrain and noticed even though we jumped away from the center of the fissure in time, we were still in the range of this jutsu and in time we would be swallowed in it too like the carriage and the poor horse that was drawing it if we don't act fast enough, that is if I want to escape it. While still in the air above the fissure, I noticed Itachi exchanging a mutual look with Shisui before they quickly started doing similar hand signs and inhaled a huge amount of air to cast a jutsu I knew. It was the wind release, great breakthrough jutsu. They both exhaled the air they accumulated at the same time creating a strong air current that helped propel them from the range of the fissure along with Hotaru and Ryakai. However, at this moment, Itachi and Shisui who had their Sharingan activated finally noticed that I seemed to be struggling while holding both Naruto and Sasuke and trying to jump from one falling boulder to another to escape this hole, but it was to no avail, especially when I accidentally slipped on my last footing and started directly falling down with the huge boulders and the rubble following after me. No S-A-S-U-K-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-
of course planned by Bacorio to make the situation seem even more hopeless, and then he saw as the last boulder came crashing down on them as his brother and poor Naruto closed their eyes from the terrible fear they were feeling while their friend Bacorio suddenly flipped positions with them as he stood on top of them and tried to protect them with his own body, again. And then boom the last boulder fell on top of them and he couldn't see the result of it as they were surrounded by other boulders, but he knew at that moment, everything was over, his brother was gone, the thing that he valued the most suddenly disappeared in front of his eyes and the worst thing was that he couldn't detect them even with his Sharingan so ended up releasing a blood-curdling scream. No. Itachi couldn't believe what just happened as he held his head with his hands and started yelling, why did I believe another kid could take care of my brother? Why would I save another person instead of my brother? Why? Why? Itachi almost suffered a mental breakdown as a deep feeling of regret and hopelessness overwhelmed him and darkness took this opportunity and started to lay its seeds and slowly grew on his heart feeding off his hatred until a hand suddenly landed on his shoulder bringing him back to reality. When Itachi raised his eyes, he saw the deep sorrow in his friend's eyes as he said to him, We are under attack, we can't let our guard down. Itachi's eyes suddenly ignited with deep hatred and anger and to the horror of Shisui, the three tomo on his blood red Sharingan started slowly changing into three spiraling curves around the pupil as Itachi said with pure venom in his voice. That's right, it's all that bastard's fault, I will make sure he will suffer the full extent of this wrath I'm feeling. The moment Itachi finished saying this, he immediately rushed to the entrance of the cave where that man was still standing with a terrifying speed, unaware that he just awakened one of the most terrifying Mangekio Sharingan. Shisui's eyes widened in surprise as he sadly whispered, so now you have them too huh, before he immediately flickered and rushed to the man that caused his best friend such great anguish. Fudo, the man who caused this fake tragedy stared arrogantly as Itachi was rushing at him and said, TCH, you Konoha ninja are really like cockroaches, why don't you just die all at once? Itachi's rage intensified when this guy called his now, dead, brother a cockroach so he immediately took out a kanai and rushed at Fudo aiming to stab his throat. However, Fudo was no joke, as he was also very proficient in close combat using his advantage in physical strength to its full potential. But Itachi was an Uchiha and not any Uchiha but a monstrous talent and now one with a Mangekio Sharingan to boast, so he easily saw through all of Fudo's blows before he even initiates them which immediately forced the latter on the defensive. Fudo's arrogance started to subside a little when he saw that this kid he was facing was no joke, so he created some distance between them and said, TCH, kid the fight is just sta, but he was immediately interrupted by someone who wasn't interested in his blabbering. It was Shisui who arrived on the battlefield and said, shut up, and immediately transformed into tens of silhouettes surrounding Fudo in the middle. Ha! You think a stupid clone jutsu would make a difference here? Fudo's arrogant expression returned, but it quickly crumbled again when these clones started attacking making him realize the danger he was in. These are all real. Impossible. I didn't see him do any hand signs yet the reality was in front of him and he was immediately taken by surprise as Shisui landed a hit on his back, Yet to his surprise, his attack simply created sparks when it landed, and Fudo immediately retaliated but his hand simply passed through the body of the Shisui that just attacked him. Hum what's this, it seems like his skin is covered in a transparent layer of rocks and Shisui's analysis was on point because Fudo was using a jutsu called, Earth Release, Rock Armor. To use this jutsu, the ninja flows Earth Chakra through their body, absorbing the properties of the earth around them to form a skin-deep armor that is transparent and is only visible when light reflects off it, but in this case, it was very cloudy as it was raining so Shisui didn't notice it. This armor can defend from all forms of blunt force. At the same time, it enhances the user's strength and doesn't consume chakra after its activation but requires stones in the vicinity of the user. Fudo looked at one of the Shisui's and said, I finally realize who you are. You are the famous Shisui of the body flicker huh? Well, I will make sure yo, suddenly a loud noise appeared behind Fudo, along with a strong light and before he could react, a hand coated in lightning impaled him on the back, going through his heart and out of his chest. Fudo started coughing blood as he tried to turn his head and look at the man who murdered him in cold blood, but he died and only caught a glimpse of the kitsune mask the man was wearing and the blood red eye that was looking at him with absolute apathy as he died. 
Then, the lightning slowly disappeared as the man who appeared out of nowhere retrieved his bloodied hand and looked at Itachi's eyes who was hiding and preparing a finishing blow while Shisui was working as a distraction with astonishment on his face, these eyes. The Uchiha are really rising. I wish you were here to see this, Obito, someone else appeared whose eyes are also different, thought Kakashi who just sneaked behind Fudo and killed him using his famous Chidori. What are you doing Kakashi? This kind of death is too easy for him. Yelled Itachi with his eyes still full of anger not satisfied with this quick outcome as he was planning to capture this man and torture him to quench his hatred. But a voice suddenly yelled from behind him to his surprise, shining upon the darkness that was growing in his heart and slowly dispersing it, Big Brother. Itachi immediately turned around and looked at the source of this voice before he immediately rushed at his little brother and they both hugged with tears falling from their eyes. As Itachi was tearfully hugging Sasuke in his arms and telling him how thankful he was that he survived. He was surprised when Sasuke looked at him proudly and his eyes started slowly turning blood red and one Tomo appeared inside of them so he couldn't help but exclaim in disbelief, Sasuke, you actually awakened your Sharingan. Sasuke puffed his cheeks and nodded proudly while saying, soon, I will be like you brother. Itachi couldn't help but think about the eyes he himself awakened and have yet to discover their abilities before he shot his friend Shisui in a certain kid a deep look and thought, I finally understand you Shisui, I too hope Sasuke doesn't need to awaken them, and if that day ever arrives, hopefully it will be like this. Meanwhile, I approached Shisui and Kakashi who were investigating Fudo's identity from whatever items he left behind. Of course, this guy, Fudo is someone I barely remember as he was a villain in the early parts of Shippuden, so it took me some time to recognize him especially as his appearance was 10 years younger. Right now, according to the original story, the first time Itachi encountered Mukai and Tobi was during the annual visit of the daimyo of the Land of Fire to Konoha. Itachi was 8 years old at the time and only a genin, he was part of Team 2 along with Tenma Izumo and Shinko Inari and because their team was the best at that time, mainly thanks to Itachi being part of it they were granted the honor of joining the escort of the daimyo which was a great honor. Of course, the daimyo wasn't going to be simply escorted by a mere genin team so he had with him a group of Anbu which Mukai was a part of, as well as two members of the 12 Guardian Ninja Guards. The 12 Guardian Ninjas are a group of people gathered from all around the Land of Fire and whose sole purpose is to guard and protect the daimyo of the Land of Fire even at the cost of their own lives, they were all proficient in their own ways, and all of them were at least Jonin level. The most well-known member of this group is Asuma Serutobi, the son of the third Hokage, a Jonin respected by everyone in Konoha. However, this simple incident of escorting the daimyo that was supposed to be a peaceful journey proved to be a turning point for many people, because during this escort mission, they ended up being approached by a masked man pretending to be a fool so no one took him seriously and they let their guard down. That is everyone other than Itachi who quickly warned his friends to be careful and Mukai who is never not careful and possibly even sleeps with both eyes open. Once Toby was near enough to the group and they were finally about to consider him as a threat, it was already too late as he took them by surprise and before they could react they were absorbed into a genjutsu showing just how terrifying he was catching all of these people in a genjutsu. This was the turning point for Mukai because this was the start of his betrayal as he pretended to have fallen for Toba's genjutsu instead of doing his best and protect the daimyo, after all with his Byakugan, it would be very hard to land him in a genjutsu even if the user is an Uchiha. Unless they were using the ability of a Mangekio Sharingan. Not to mention that he was being careful from the start. As for Team 2, only Shinko landed prey to Toba's assault, while Itachi and Tenma has some proficiency in genjutsu and were ready for it so they were able to evade it in time. Seeing that everyone else was immobilized, the two of them tried to stand in front of the daimyo to protect him heroically. But, while Itachi was careful and kept trying to analyze the situation first before taking action, Tenma was hot-headed and immediately rushed at Tobi recklessly while wielding a kunai, and even though Itachi tried to stop him. It was already too late as his attack simply passed through Tobi who then turned around and killed him to the horror of Itachi. This was the turning point of Itachi who experienced his first true loss, the loss of his friend and teammate, and the grief from this incident was so great to the point that he directly awakened a two-tomo Sharingan and vowed to protect those dear to him, especially his little brother, as for his other teammate Shinko. 
she immediately decided to abandon her dream of being a ninja and settled down in Konoha as a civilian. Of course, this was all possible because in the end they were saved when Toby sensed Kakashi approaching the scene and he didn't want to meet him yet so he retreated, but the damage from this incident was far from over because right after this, the 12 Guardian Ninja were deemed incompetent in protecting the daimyo so their group was disbanded. However, they didn't want to accept this fate and humiliation, especially as some of their members didn't agree to Kanaha's passive ways in the previous wars yet they kept being supported by the daimyo. So, one of the members of this group named Kazuma gathered five other members, and under his leadership, they started planning on how to destroy Konoha and invade other countries. However, when the daimyo found out, he ordered the other six members which included Asuma and Chiriku who is part of the ninja temple of the land of fire along with the other four to stop them. From these twelve, only three people survived, Asuma, Chiriku, and Kazuma who was actually defeated by Asuma but tricked him and faked his death. Kazuma was a master in Fuenjutsu. So, after this plan failed, he went ahead with another plan he was plotting for a longer period. He was actually skilled enough to the point that during the Nine Tails incident, he noticed that its chakra was so great and untamed that some of it leaked in the air. So, taking this opportunity, he used his masterful Fuenjutsu and captured this leaked chakra, and five years after the incident, he sealed it in the body of his son, Sora. So, the screams from earlier are probably Sora's huh. Fucking Kurama spreading his chakra on every damn place, my face couldn't help but turn into a frown as I thought about this and when I approached Shisui and Kakashi with Naruto staying close to me. I noticed Shisui's eyes flickering with an unpredictable meaning as he decided to ask the question that kept bothering him, Bakoryo-kun, how did you survive that fall? I'm pretty sure you seemed to be helpless during that situation. My face couldn't help but turn into a mischievous smile, why do you ask? Aren't you glad we survived? Shisui's face was calm and still as he said, No, I'm glad you guys survived, I don't know how I was going to live with the burdens of your lives on my back, not to mention. His last words were muttered while he was looking at Itachi who was interested in this conversation so he started approaching us while holding Sasuke's hand, well, since you are glad I can tell you that it was all thanks to Kakashi over here who saved us at the last second, just before we were crushed under those stones, he appeared under us and took us underground with him saving us at the last second. Shisui's eyes widened a little at this as he looked at Kakashi, as for Itachi, he immediately bowed to Kakashi and thanked him from the bottom of his heart as he said, thank you so much Kakashi-san, I will never forget this favor. Kakashi seemed to have remembered something as he said in melancholy, I wish there was someone there for us. My eyes flickered a little when I heard this, and Shisui who kept observing me also noticed this and just couldn't put to rest a doubt that kept growing in his mind, did he do all of this on purpose? But this means he already knew about Kakashi tailing us, not to mention betting his life and the kids like this. How can he be so sure that Kakashi will save them? At this point, Shisui couldn't help but look at Naruto who was still fearful of this incident and kept clinging to me, and Sasuke who was still scared but was showing off his one Tomo Sharingan to his brother. Or maybe he never considered this a risk, maybe he. Shisui was suddenly interrupted from his thoughts as he suddenly noticed the kid he was secretly observing looking at him with a weird smile that made his spine shiver. After sending W warning to Shisui so that he stops observing me like a creepy stalker. I casually retrieved a scroll and walked towards Fudo's body, then I placed it on top of him and did a simple hand sign which sealed the body inside of it. This is the ninja world's version of a portable inventory. However, it could only contain non-living objects inside it otherwise. It would have been great. Afterward, I put that scroll inside my bag and turned to Kakashi who was watching me with a weird expression behind his mask. Thank you so much for saving us, but now is not the time for this, after all we have yet to find the boy that was screaming in agony. Kakashi gave me a deep look and before he could respond, two people approached us. They were Hotaru and Ryakai who immediately started thanking Itachi and Shisui for helping them. Thank you kids, I can't imagine what would have happened to me if you didn't offer your help. Itachi whose eyes were now back to normal shot them a complicated look because not long ago he was blaming himself for helping these strangers instead of his brother which almost ended up with him losing him. Shisui who noticed his friend's dilemma, nodded at them with a smile, don't mention it, we are traveling together after all so we need to take care of each other, 
Hotaru nodded at Shisui with appreciation and they didn't mind Itachi's silence as they simply assumed that he was still shocked by almost losing his little brother. It was then that Kakashi who was interrupted by them spoke, Bakorio's right, we can't waste our time here, we still haven't found the kid that was screaming, although the sound seems to have subsided. Shisui nodded at him and gave me one last sneaky look before he turned around and started walking toward the entrance of the cave. You are right, let's check out this cave, that man seemed to be protecting it when we came, but then he suddenly stopped as if he just thought of something. So, he turned around and said, I will investigate it with Kakashi, you guys will stay here under the protection of Itachi and Hotaru. Itachi immediately agreed, clearly not wanting to let his brother alone again, while Hotaru and Ryakai didn't want to face any more unnecessary danger so they also agreed especially with the presence of an Anbu around. As Shisui and Kakashi carefully entered the cave while surveilling the area with their Sharingan in case there were any hidden traps. Itachi turned to me at this point noticing the slightly tattered clothes on my back which reminded him of how I tried to protect Naruto and Sasuke using my body. So, with a grateful look on his face he said, thank you for protecting Sasuke and Naruto with your body earlier, are you injured? This is what you call killing four birds with one stone, I thought smugly at my achievement when I heard Itachi thanking me. After all, I not only helped Sasuke awaken his Sharingan and Itachi awaken his Mangekio Sharingan, but I also got Kakashi out of his cover and taught Naruto a valuable lesson that in this world, being careless without strength is a sin. The expression on my face however was full of innocence as I said, you don't need to thank me, after all they are both like my little K brothers, tch I almost said kids there. Itachi simply nodded at me ignoring my blunder which made both Sasuke and Naruto bashful and extremely happy easing some of the heaviness on their hearts from the previous incident. But I noticed someone kept looking at me secretly with a suspicious look on his eyes from time to time while thinking, is this kid really that weak? This was of course Hotaru who never once trusted me even before the start of this journey. Minus 10 minutes later Kakashi and Shisui emerged from the cave with grave expressions on their faces, and without any surprise, they weren't alone as Shisui was gently carrying an unconscious kid on his back as they slowly approached us. So, this is Sora huh? He should be around the same age as us, I thought as I looked at Sora, the kid Shisui was carrying. Sora has straight shoulder length, dull bluish gray hair and an asymmetrical style with a single lock of hair falling into his face, and brown colored eyes, and I couldn't help but think that he was quite cute. But then I suddenly thought, but where is that bastard father of his? I was surprised at how little time they took to locate Sora as they didn't seem to have gone through any kind of battle. After they arrived at our location, I directly asked them, what did you find? Kakashi didn't want to speak as he simply shot Naruto a look while Shisui struggled a little before he said, when we entered the cave, we found a huge ritual room covered in various seals clearly made by a master in Fuenjutsu. As for this kid, he was laying on his back on a raised altar in the middle of the room where all the seals seemed to be converging but we don't know their purpose as of yet. But we are sure that this was the cause for the kids screaming, from the look Kakashi gave Naruto I can assume they already know what was done to this kid but they probably don't want to discuss this in front of strangers especially when the matter concerned the Nine Tails Chakra. There was no change in my expression as I thought of all of this before I said, did you find anyone else inside? Shisui shot me a weird look as he thought, does he know something about these people? But he calmly shook his head and said, no, other than this kid, we didn't find anyone else. I see. I said with a calm look with no one noticing the deep darkness swirling in my eyes as I detected someone watching us from afar. Meanwhile, as we were discussing this, Sora's father Kazuma exited a hidden passage that was connected to the cave and started observing us from the top of a hill with a twisted expression on his face as he murmured, these Konoha bastards, they actually killed Fudo and now Sora landed in their hands, at least from how very little urgency they seem to have. They probably don't understand that I sealed a part of the Nine Tails Chakra inside Sora to make him a pseudo Jinchuriki, I need to retrieve him no matter what and send him to someplace where he can grow undetected until the time to use him against Konoha arrive. Kazuma was a tall man of tan complexion, he wore a purple kipau like garment that was lined with yellow, blue, and gray and straw sandals. His hair was white and long while worn out in texture. 
He also had a pale long scar stretching diagonally across his face, presumably from Asuma's final attack on him. This wasn't his original appearance as previously his hair was brown and short, and in his current state, even Asuma who knew him for a long time might not recognize him. When he noticed that we were about to set out on our journey, he started following us silently to prepare an ambush to retrieve Sora. But what he didn't know is that he already got his feet entangled in the web of a deadly spider and this spider already categorized him as its prey. Thanks for listening guys see you in the next part.